Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 48th World where we talk about celebrity and their comings and goings and we have to promote allegedly saying of their comings and goings because we really don't know but welcome again to Deb Chanel's 48th World and as you can see you know what we're going to be discussing who we going to be discussing but you don't know what we're going to be discussing so why don't we get right on into it now i heard on the social media streets okay just like i normally would um kenya moore and cynthia bailey are having a little riff in that ultimate girls trip um episode or season they're filming on (coughs) with ogs and it seems like kenya may have ruffled some of cynthia's feathers now, unless you watch on the Peacock streaming service, The Ultimate Girls Trip, featuring the OGs of the Real Housewives franchise, uh, you may find out what they were fussing about. But right now, Cynthia is doing press interviews along with the rest of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Cass Mace, and probably the other ones on the other franchise are making their rounds as well. And of course, when their interviewer, whomever it is, uh, are asking questions, deep-rooted questions, um, this particular item of interest comes up. Because, you know, I guess people were speculating or somebody dropped some tea out in the social media world saying Kenya Moore and Cynthia had got into a fuss fight, a verbal altercation. And I was like, okay, what did Twirl do this time? Even though it ain't none of my business, y'all know I had to come with the comeback. What did Kenya Moore, what did Twirl do this time? Because <sighs> sometimes... Twirl gets ahead of herself and you know she gotta play her villain part and if it happens to fall on her bestie which is Cynthia Candy that little clique they had on the Real Housewives of Atlanta she gonna do it cause shoot she got on candy butt one time I think it was in season 12 or 13 I can't remember Candy didn't like how she expressed some things and Kenya like, I don't know who you're talking to. You know, she tried to boss back up at Kenya. And then Kenya was like, ooh, let me slow my roll. Because, yeah, uh, Candy and Cynthia was, uh, what do you call it, a major point of getting me back on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. They fought hard. So, yeah, I better slow my roll till I get back on the uh, show. And I solidify myself again. And then I can make my moves. Okay. I can move all of them out the way. Play them like chess pieces. You know what I'm saying? Because she wants to be crowned. And she, knowing how competitive she is, she's going to do it. Because who would have thought Nene would have been replaced, okay? But Nene overplayed her hand as well. Thinking that Bravo really was going to crown her queen of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And not something she just really made up in her mind and just called herself, established the queen, HBIC, the head honcho of creating the show all in its own. Even though Bravo, you know, let her go on and have that title self-appointed, of course. They didn't say anything until she really got the big head. And then we see where they did not renew her contract and did not ask her back. And it's like, okay, Cynthia, really? You really think Kenya Moore was your friend? Okay. We're going to continue to let you believe that. But in my heart of hearts, I believe Kenya just look at you as an associate. It's hard to be friends with a complete narcissist, you know, which Kenya really is on TV. Now, can I say she's that in real life? I can't because I haven't really met her or know somebody that met her. So all of it could just be her whole personality, her whole character could just be stemming from her acting on the show. Now, of course, is she 100% acting and none of it is probably her real characteristic of what she, her behavior and her demeanor are made upon? It's a possibility. It's plausible that she could be actually friendly off air and if you meet her in the street she probably would 
address you politely and give you autographs, take photos with you. I'm really not sure because, like I said, I haven't run into her. But it does make you think because you would think Nene is that warm and, and a sociable type of person when she's off the clock taping. But we've caught her, or I say some people caught her, and they didn't like the inter interaction she was having with them even though it was just like on the spot and she could have not been feeling well that day or she just didn't want to be bothered but like i said you got to be bothered it comes with the territory when you come out there and want to be a celebrity this is the other job you must keep nobody's gonna care about uh you're out having personal time you're out with your family no they see you as somebody that they follow they admire or they look up to and idolize I, you know i don't but some people get in that way of thinking and they think you they can approach you anytime they see you because they feel like they own you in a certain sense and kind of since i wouldn't say own but they do have a part of making your career a success because if you weren't a household name and people didn't like you for what you were given on the screen you know you really wouldn't be thought about You'll be a has-been actress or a, a D-lister, F-lister, actress or actor. Because in a, in a strange world that we do live in, people have to like you. You have to be a likable entity that they can either respect or they like your work or your body of work. Whether you're in the industry of uh, making movies or musical uh, attributes where you produce or you record as an artist music you know <coughs> people do make you you know because a lot of people don't have to listen to your music a lot of people don't have to watch your shows a lot of people don't have to like fun over you and make sure you're good by buying your products listening to or tuning into shows that you're on so i wouldn't say they own you but they have a stake in you and if you treat them any kind of way or you know some bad things nini were doing which was not taking pictures when she was out and about in the um what do you call it, the airport or taking herself with signing an autograph you know she just felt like entitled and she felt she was on her time and she didn't want to be bothered with uh people lesser than her i guess now if she was surrounded by a lot of celebrities i'm sure everything would have been real kosher nothing would have been too much and of course she want to rub elbows or give hugs to people in her circle or circles that she want to be a part of but when you're just like everyday uh folk and you have a normal job nine to five or eight to three however your job career takes you if she can't get with it, she just kind of dismisses you. And I think that's why Nene lost a lot of followers. Because, you know, she kind of got big-headed. And, you know, Bravo had to bring her down to sides. And they're offering, more than like offering her a bone to even try to tape Greg's uh, Celebration of Life party and how Nene is staring. And I'm sure Marla will have a hand in that as well. Uh, to promote them, those scenes or episodes that she's going to give us from what I hear allegedly. And that's giving her a, a inch back in the door of celebrity ship, you know. I mean, she's already solidified herself because she's been, you know, in plays. She's been um, in sitcom shows on TV. she um been on reality shows uh, and other type shows. Um with competitiveness uh, uh, connected to it. Y'all remember The Apprentice and she was on Donald Trump's uh, little um, show he was doing. I think it was The Apprentice or something like that. But, you know, she's done a lot. Not so much in depth with acting, but she she knows a lot of people now uh, because of her, her stink on uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Real Housewives of Atlanta platform brings a lot of uh resources to your fingertips especially if you're good and you are like out in the public eye you're a likable uh figure that people like to get to know or are interested in and want to know more of so that's how she got her notoriety in a sense or became a household name and um i guess 
Kenya wanted that as well. And she plays her part. And hey, I'm glad to see her on Real Housewives of Atlanta because if she wasn't on them with the rest of the Hellraisers gone, what would we have? What we would we really would not have a show. So yes, and I don't know if Nene is gonna come back or they're gonna offer her a more of a friend ship contract or it's just like these little episodes she's gonna give us for season fourteen. If and when, because we don't know. That's allegedly being spoken out there. Uh, hopefully, it, it will come to fruition for her sake. Anyway, giving her more money. Uh, like nobody don't need a lot of, you know, more money to play some more money, you know. Uh, but just don't run at the dollar. You know, let the dollar come to you. And have some morals and ethical uh, uh, decision making when you acquire that kind of money. No, don't be a butthole. Don't be an asshole going out there just treating people any kind of way and like you, 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 you the shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it, they, it can turn on you. You can be the shit one day and you can be in shit the next day. See what I'm saying? That that goes up, it shall come back down. And hopefully, the people that you meet coming back down, you didn't do wrong. But I just said that to say this. It seems like Kenya is kind of getting a big head now. And she's trying to maneuver, playing her little chess and, and pieces and, and how she's moving on the board. Now, I'm talking about the board being the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, as you can see, Kenya was brought back on by the influence that Candy Burris and Cynthia, you know, I'm going to say a little bit, that they were inquired to bring Kenya back on to the platform of Real Housewives of Atlanta. And you see what happened. Voila, she's back. Uh, but she had those two people in her corner to be able to brought, bring her back. And um, it just is what it is. Now she's uh, fully uh, solidified back in the camp of Real Housewives of Atlanta's cast. And now she's like, okay, I'm getting money. But uh, I need your money, Cynthia. So I'm going to pretty much dog, dog you out. And be able to get the kind of money I need. Because with you not being here. Uh, that's going to be easy peasy for me. To get in a lot of more uh, zeros behind my paycheck. Because of course she can't move Candy out the way. Because Candy kind of a, sh a shrewd businesswoman herself. And she can see things prior to they actually happen. I mean she. Not that she's a. Um, a what do you call it. A mind reader. But she watches people. And she studies them. And she sees how they move. And when she don't like how a person moves, she gets, you know, quiet. And she, she be reserved. And she just thinks about things. And I think she don't figure Kenya out. And Kenya is going to be having a tough time replacing Candy. Because the only thing I see that can replace Candy if they really find a loophole and bring Phaedra Pauls back. Then... She would kind of be not want to be in the kitchen when it's hot. Sort of like Portia. She don't want to face up to what we know she did. Or we expect that she did. Because the man was not, you know, free to be marrying and seeing anybody else. Meaning Simon Gabbardi and uh, family's relationship really wasn't like tightly placed in a bowl, wrapped up and all that. That their marriage was done you know it wasn't that cut and dry it was some gray areas there but Portia you know leaning to her own understanding she felt that she wanted to speed things up a little bit allegedly and make him her make that man her so it really is kind of messy and I could see why she didn't want meaning Portia uh maybe she was asking for more money to be able to sit there and fight with those women about what actually happened in her eyes and getting her story on tape or film uh they weren't going to pay her the money that she felt she needed to have in order to stay in the real housewives of atlanta franchise and defend herself probably every episode it, it would have been really portia and kenya's show because that's that's what they would have been fighting about and then you know, the Raiders would have went through the roof, I'm sure. But she's like, no, nah, I just need to do my show, make it as uh, big and positive and juicy for people to want to tune in. And then I don't have to worry about, you know, fighting and uh, verbally fighting um, with anybody, especially Kenya Moore, trying to tell me what I did. And, you know, I should have kept my legs closed to marry me. And like Nene has always, you know. That was her staple 
uh, comeback <laughs> line that she wanted to use for people Jab was doing wrong, or the one that she used where you, you, you when you play dirty, you'll never win, or something to that effect. So that was really funny. So, um, and with Cynthia feeling like Kenya was not really in her corner uh, on this ultimate girls trip that they're both a part of. Um, that little show that's going to be airing on Peacock. It kind of mind boggles me. I'm like, Cynthia, y'all are really, or she really played you, but you allowed her to play you. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can play you, Cynthia. It's because you really don't think. And that's what Cynthia, I'm not Cynthia, Kenya uh, praise on. She know you're not going to think things through. She know you're not going to figure out what she's doing. Therefore, she's going to use you. For her benefit. And you see why she's still on the show. And you gone bye bye. And I know. Um, people might get tired of me saying this. But might probably like. Uh uh you don't need to be on that show. If you can't be a, a full time peach holding maid. You don't need to be on the show. They don't need to use you as an extra. You know what I'm saying. So I think Kenya's plan. To act like she was just in so much. Destitute and all this. That in the third and. You know, she leave. I forgot how, how she left the show, to tell you the truth. I can't remember. Maybe somebody can tell me. Y'all know I'm getting up in age. I can't be remembering all this stuff. Because they do stuff every day, I tell you. It's like they just be doing it to make press. So, like I said, it's really no here nor there. Or why she got off the show. Um, but we just know she back. And now we see Cynthia gone. And I'm just really thinking, when's Candy finna exit? And what part she's gonna play in making sure that happens okay because can you play chess all the time she just wants to be the highest paid and this that and third but that could be a curse because look nini was the highest paid at one time then candy came and you know because nini took her little hiatus and wanted to do other things and then candy slid into that slot and you know she she made it very lucrative for her so of course she became the next highest paid or since nini was gone she was considered the highest paid because you know they weren't paying cynthia well for nothing you know so it's like okay but cynthia don't got her feelings hurt and i'm like girl you are if i'm 53 you might be 54 or you might be 53 come in nini are 53 so I don't know if you're one year older, Cynthia, or, or what. But you two, girl, you too old to be getting your feelings hurt. Especially, you know, the character of Kenya or what she plays on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, is she something else different outside when y'all are not taping? Let us just know. But you even said in this interview that, it happened, the argument happened with you and Kenya on camera, but you were not allowed because Kenya didn't allow you to discuss it on camera. She wanted to handle everything off camera. Now, I admired you when you said, hey, if it happened on camera, we need to uh, handle it on camera because the people are going to wonder why I didn't take up for myself. And I'm saying, see, you answered your own question, Cynthia. You should have, if it happened on tape, I've done it, we're going to finish it on tape my response is gonna be on tape so people won't think i'm just this person that everybody can run over everybody can take advantage of and i have not a brain on me i'm just beauty and fashion and pretty much that's what the staple uh, uh you've placed on your back you're a, a beauty queen well you ain't gonna say a beauty queen because that was kenya's role but you know you're in the fashion world and you were paid to do fashion, basically model clothes, model accessories, look pretty, and that's it. You were the face and the fashion guru. So basically, that's that's how you've been handling yourself. Because your daughter can talk a little bit more and we can understand her and she moves. Like when she says something, she says something and mean it. But with you... It's always a flip-flop, flip-flop, flip-flop. Oh, I'm going to stay with the crowd that really uh, is winning right now. Because I need to be on a winning team. And that's how you've always played the game. So now you are game over because you're out. And they bring in other players in. And that's just the bottom line. 
when you have the opportunity to show us what Cynthia is made of, you need to show us on TV, not in interviews and all of this outside of the taping. That's where you can negotiate your money, Cynthia. But of course, you never understood it. You never win it, wanted to win. And that's why you're out the door. So don't blame Kenya. Kenya understands the game. And she's going to try to be the winner of the last woman standing on Real Housewives of Atlanta. You see where I'm going with this? Though I think she's going to have a hard time with Marlo in the mix too. Because, you know, Marlo, this is her new time being a peach holder. Okay, well, we're going to be examining her life, uh, however it falls, good or bad, however she can spend it. We're going to be analyzing her through a lens of just looking on the outside in. You see what I'm saying? But, yeah, child, children, honey. Cynthia just really needs to stop doing interviews because she really makes herself look weak. Weak. And destitute, and like she ain't got oh no hope or surviving any reality shows because she's just that docile, you know. And she wanna talk big, she tries to talk big within her interviews, but it doesn't come across on screen. So basically that's all I had. Uh and I'm gonna let you listen to a little audio where she simply says herself she uh, felt disappointed in Kenya and she was really heartbroken about what Kenya did to her or said to her and she wanted to have the conversation on camera because it happened on camera on that ultimate girls trip but Kenya would not allow it so I'm like girl you're older than Kenya okay what do you mean Kenya wouldn't allow it? She wouldn't let it play out on camera. Who is her? Who is Kenya to tell you how to open up your mouth and express yourself? So you see, that's where we are. That's why you're off and Kenya is on. All right, but let's, let me let y'all listen to the audio where she talks about Kenya Moore and a little spat they had and how Kenya had hurt her feelings at damn near almost 60 years old uh cynthia you still letting people hurt your feelings then she calling she the auntie of brooklyn and i'm like did you have you ever kept brooklyn before without kenya being around or any of that you know because i'm being investing in other people's kids when you ain't you know on some piece of paper saying you can do all these things because why put your money in something that kenya is just using you uh for the next come up or something to that effect okay so don't claim you somebody's aunt and you ain't really nobody aunt and depending on how can you feel about you this day and that other day or the days or in the future you might not even get the privilege privilege of seeing brooklyn so be cautious with how you use your words and how you label yourself what you are to other people because they may not reciprocate it towards you and from what i understand and what i heard during this interview it wasn't reciprocated okay can you didn't care less about your feelings all right but let me let y'all listen to the video i'm good i'm good if if anything i'm not close to anything but i'm not chasing anything um, I know that you went there with, with with Kenya, too, and it seems like, based on the trailer, that the two of you kind of butt heads a little bit as well. We did. We mm -hmm. did. And, um, you know, I don't want to make that big of a deal sure. um, out of it, but I will say, you know, Kenya, for me, is one of the ladies that I'm the closest to, so she was the one that I was the most emotionally invested in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she, she hurt my feelings, and... Um, you know, I really didn't see see that coming. I definitely, you guys will see, you know, I started the trip. I just wanted her to be happy. She's, she was going through her divorce mm -hmm. and her baby for the first time, beautiful Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to be as supportive as I could of her because I knew more than any of the other ladies, you know, how difficult that was because we're on, you know, Kenya and I were on Atlanta together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most of the ladies are moms, so I knew they would have some compassion for her. Mm -hmm. um, well, in the end, it just, I felt like blew up in my face a little bit just because I felt like that same reciprocity wasn't there for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had things that I was trying to do on the trip and I felt like that love and support didn't show up the same way. Yeah. And that bothered me. So we had to have a conversation about it, which, 
you know, escalated a little bit. But at the end of the day, you know, I've been friends with Kenya for a long time and I will always have love for her. I adore, I'm obsessed with my niece, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And, um, she's not your niece, Cynthia. Regardless of what happened on the trip, which you guys will have to wait and see. Um, you know, although I feel like the dynamic of the friendship, uh, excuse me, I feel like although the dynamic of the friendship has changed a little bit due to that trip for me, um, there'll always be love there. And I don't think it's She makes you look like that, a fool, you know, Cynthia. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've already, I mean, we've had to do press and stuff together. We're already past it, but I will be honest. The friendship has definitely changed, although for me, the love will always be there. Yeah. Has it changed for her too, you think? Um, no. You know what? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, all I know is I just, you know, recently saw her, you know, out here doing press and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's always love when we see each other. But we did have a off-camera conversation mm -hmm. uh, about it. Uh, I tried to have an on-camera conversation about it, but because it happened on camera. Sure. You know, you, the rules are if you piss me off on camera, we talk about it on camera. Because then you guys are like, well, why did, why did you say something? You know, yeah, yeah. Guys yeah. Don't, why? you guys aren't privy to our text and uh, conversations outside of the show. Of course. So, but yet you um, did. I tried to address it. Um, that opportunity did not work out for me. And over time, we did have a conversation months later. And I felt like it was a really grown conversation. And I appreciated the conversation. And we'll just see where we go from here. But yeah. again, the love will always be there. But as a friend, you know, I'm allowed to be disappointed and hurt. And that's just what happened. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, regardless of where we are, I can always, you know, root and support her, you know, in the best way that I can, you know, yeah. you know, under the circumstances. Definitely. Oh, I hope everything works out. That makes and I'm rooting for her on Dance with the Stars. I was going to say, what is, I uh, think what she's you... killing it. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's doing an amazing job. I'm so proud of her. And, um, you know, she'll like send me, you know, the, you know, little, um, dancing with the star stuff to post and I always like make sure I throw it up there for her yeah. and vote for her. Um, mm -hmm. definitely rooting for her. I think she's doing an incredible job. Definitely. Did you know that she had those dance moves in her? Uh, well, you know what? She's always talked about her, you know, being a dancer. Yeah. I didn't realize that she was as good as she is. Mm -hmm. Like she has been killing it. Like I've been watching all the stuff online. I'm like, oh my God, like she is um, very, very, very talented. Very she is. She is definitely. Well, how? What was her reaction when, um, when you announced that you were leaving uh, Atlanta? Um, she was supportive. Uh, we Even though she probably had a hand in and, it. Um, you know, I, I can't remember exactly what she said, but she felt like if anyone could transition out of, you know, from this show mm -hmm. and go on to even bigger and better things she felt like you know brand wise right um talent wise um you know that i would be fine definitely so, yeah I'm not a lot. I no, that. of course and now how about portia have you talked to her at all i have not talked to portia mm -hmm. you know um i don't know why i really haven't talked to her okay and we just gonna stop that on portia but you see how she said she allowed Kenya to disappoint her and this, that, and the third. I'm like, that's called, you have low self-esteem, Cynthia. You don't have to let somebody, or somebody don't have to let you be disappointed or happy about a situation. You should command that. If the shit hit the fan on the show while it was being taped, then we would have had that conversation on tape. Okay, that's all, Cynthia. That's all you had to do. Shut shit down. Tell somebody. Don't be aggressive at the wrong time, at the wrong moment when everything is like happening and you have nothing to say. But then after the tape is finished rolling, you got a whole lot of stuff to say. No, 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 no. No, that's not how we do it. That's not how we do it, Cynthia. Okay. Oh, but this is how we do it. We get people sh uh, straight when they try to, you know, get on our nerves or they try to say something slick out their mouth. We shut you down. We gonna handle it when it was happening, Cynthia. We don't just sit and wait and think about it because it's nothing to think about. Disrespect is just disrespect. You know, somebody getting on your nerve, they getting on your nerves. And you need to politely handle the situation accordingly, okay? But again, like I said, you digress. You always digress when it comes to Kenya. 
uh, and pretty much nobody else really give you no problem because like I said you're not a bad person you're not you know you're really not you're a very friendly uh, person but you just don't know how to keep your peace within yourself around your circle and if you can't have no peace around your circle then you have to wage war yourself till you get that peace that you need and deserve. But honey, I was so sick of her. I was sick of Cynthia. Still giving Kenya that much power over her. That's why you off the show, baby. And she's still on. And of course, she ain't going to say nothing nasty. Like, you know, you won't be able to handle it financially, emotionally, or physically uh, after this show cast you out. And we come up with the 14th season and you're not there. Of course, she's not going to say all that stuff. Because then they, we'll see her as a, a real negative person. You know what I'm saying? And we'll be making videos about her uh, character on how she treated you so I'm like Cynthia it's time for you to grow up but you know at this at this point in your life with you being half of a century girl I just give it up and, and, and just say you do you you continue to do you and just you know do whatever okay because it's just a past point with you uh, that's a past point you don't go on beyond in no bits and can't nobody say you but the Lord child so it is what it is. But that's all I had of this video, guys. Honey, can you still uh, cracking the whip on Cynthia? And Cynthia is obeying all the time. But y'all get down on those comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about it. And if you like and love, you got to have more. Come on back to the channel. You never know what I might be talking about. Okay? But go on and share my stuff out, y'all. Go and share my stuff. Share my videos. And like them, please. And thank you. And I will see you next video. Bye-bye.